I guess in terms of evidence-based medicine, I've had a sort of interest right from the start of medical school, actually. Within about the first few weeks of arriving here in Oxford, I was lucky to meet David Sackett, who set up the Centre for Evidence-Based Medicine. And that was way back in 1995, actually. And ever since then, I've gone through my medical career. I've had this sort of passion and interest in how evidence is used in decision-making. Evidence-based medicine is, is the integration of clinical experience and expertise with the evidence and with patient values. It matters because any treatment, any investigation has benefits but also can have harms. And the balance of them two are really important in overall decision making. When people buy a washing machine, they often put a lot of energy in it and sort of time looking at it. They look at the energy rating, they look at the cost, they think about the brand recognition they like. They may ask their friends and then suddenly they come to take a treatment on board. And you can think about this yourself, you'll have a treatment and you don't ask any questions about the evidence how much benefit I get, what were the harms, and often we'll use treatments, and we've done this a lot in the past, that aren't evidence-based actually. I think there are three things I do. One is I do research, the second is I teach, and then the third thing which often people are totally ignore is my job is to communicate to a wider audience. So I'm very aware that whatever I'm doing in them two spheres, I should make my work publicly available. And so yes, we have an active Twitter account, we have a blog that I run, I try and work with the media quite a lot, and that's interesting, and with the newspapers sometimes, they've got something active that I think is important, I'll work hard to get the message out there. We help just not only primary care doctors, we help surgeons, we help internal medicine doctors. The first thing is we do is in training and teaching. So we have an active teaching program, we have a master's program that has about 75 students on and this morning I've just looked at another 11 applications so it's increasing all the time and an active DPhil program PhD which is the sort of final end if you like. And that's a pretty big program of trying to train and teach people. The second thing is then we're really interested in the methods, how you apply the research particularly. So it's okay saying you've got all this research but how do you actually apply it to patient care? And then you can think of all sorts of factors. For instance, very simply, communication. There's a great area. So it's all right having all the research, all the evidence, but how do you communicate in a way to patients that's understandable, that makes sense, and will actually change the way they think about their healthcare?